So in this video number 12 of the SAT Math Bootcamp, we're going to talk about, well, we're going to focus on percents, but we're going to talk about them in the context of fractions and decimals. Being able to convert between percents, fractions, and decimals, and being able to be fluent in using them, being comfortable in using them, is so important for the SAT. I mean, it's important for life, but it's so important for the SAT because they ask so many questions on this that we really need to make sure we understand uh, how to figure these out, what they mean, and how we're going to use them. So first, we've already talked about fractions and decimals in previous videos, so if you haven't still unclear about those, go check out those videos. But now we're going to talk about percents. Now a percent is essentially just short for out of 100. You can think, think about it this way, per, you know, for every, out of, cent. Cent as in century, you know, something like that. Century out of 100, right? So cent is the prefix for 100. So it means out of 100. So if I say something like 70 percent or 70 percent, I would just say 70 out of 100, which is just 70 over 100 as a fraction, right? For every 70, there's 100. Now, if you noted my language there, this is just a ratio. In fact, percent is just an easy, quick way of talking about a ratio. Uh, we just use the term percent just to um, just to just to say it quickly and make it easier. We don't want to have to say 70 out of 100 every time. We just want to say 70 percent. Uh, and this especially gets confusing when you have, you know, 69.72. It's weird to say 69.72 out of 100. It's easier to say 69.72%. Okay, so we know that uh, a percent is a ratio. We know that it's simply just out of 100. How do we use percents with fractions and decimals? So let's start up here with, say, a f percent, 25%. So here is the percent marker. How do we go from a percent to a decimal. Well, the easiest way to do that is move the decimal point over two spaces and then you're done. So the decimal would be 0.25. And these are essentially interchangeable. To go from a decimal to a percent, you move it the other way. And then you're going to get from 0.25 to 25%. Simple as that. How about from a yeah, because that was a weird arrowhead. Uh, how about from a percent to a fraction? Well, all you have to do there is, well, if you remember over here, we already had our fraction. Percent is just out of 100, so you just say the percent out of 100. And then you can reduce that to, this reduces to 1 out of 4, but you can reduce it to whatever it reduces to. How do you get a, a percent back? Well, it's actually, let's talk about doing a fraction to a decimal. How do you get a uh, fraction to a decimal? Oh, let me just say put over 100 here. How do you get a fraction to a decimal? Well, you just essentially put it into your calculator, do the actual division. So you'd either do 25 divided by 100 or you do 1 divided by 4. So and we're here, calc. So when we do 1 divided by 4, we're going to get 0.25, and there's your decimal. Uh, to get your fraction from a decimal, um, I guess there's a lot of ways to do this. Probably the easiest way is actually, let's see. Oh, okay, so it's just to do this. It's the same. Th this is the same thing as 0.25 over 1, which isn't really a fraction until you move this decimal point over 2, move this decimal point over 2, and there you go, 25 out of 100. There's your fraction, and then you can make that 1 out of 4. Um, there's also a lot of calculators have a decimal to fraction key, so you can use that too. Um, this is a little bit more confusing, um, but I don't really remember any other way to do it. Like, if you had something like 0.73... Um, yeah, I think you just do 0 0.73 over 1, you move this over 2, move this over 2, now you have 73 over 100, and then there's your fraction if you can reduce that any further. I don't think you can for that one. So finally, how do you go from a fraction to a percent? Well, you got to first go to a decimal by doing this method, and then you transform your, de you transform your decimal into a percent. So let's do some examples. What if I started with 0.34? That would be just 34%. Right, by moving the decimal point over 2. And as a fraction, it would be 34 over 100, which we can reduce to 17 over 50. Let's say I started with, I don't know, 0.2%. What would that be as a decimal? Well, we have to be careful to move this over two spaces. So it would be 0 0.002, 0 0.002 would be our decimal. As a fraction, it would be, well, 0 0.002 over 1. I'm going to move the decimal point over 3 here, so I'm going to move it over 3 here. So this is just 2 over 1,000, which is just 1 out of 500, so there's our fraction over here. 
Finally, let's start with a uh, fraction. So let's say 4 out of 5. So that's our fraction. We just divide 4 by 5 to get a decimal. That gives us 0 0.8. To get a percent, we just move the decimal point over two spaces, and we get 80%. Now you're probably thinking, at least for the decimal moving, how do I remember which way to move it? Do I move it to the left? Do I move it to the right? What's the? How do I remember? And the way I always explain these, and I've done this before I think in earlier videos, is I don't try to memorize rules. I try to come up with examples that I can use to remember which way I move it. So for instance, 50%. If you ever forget, which way do I move my decimal? Think of 50%. 50. If I want to make this into a decimal, is it going to be 5,000? Like, if do I move it this way and do I get 5,000? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, I'm going to have to move it this way to be at 0.50 as a decimal. Same thing, if you forget, let's say you have a decimal, 0.25. And you say, OK, what is that as a percent? Are you going to move this to the left two spaces and get 0.0025%? That makes just no sense. You're going to move it to the other way and get 25%. Um, and this especially helps you, the decimal rule, when you're dealing with weird percents. Let's say 1,275%. What is this at a decimal? Well, it's just as a decimal, well, you're just going to move it to the left. You're going to get 12.75. Uh, as a fraction, 12.75 over 1, which is 1275 over 1,000 or 100. You just divide from there, and you reduce, and you get a particular fraction. right? So memorizing these methods, and you can remember them by thinking back to these typical examples, will help you with these harder ones that aren't as obvious. And I think that's all I want to say about percents. Let me just make sure I didn't forget anything. Um, yeah, be, being able, oh yeah, very important thing. Good thing I didn't forget this. Now, what you're usually going to see on the SAT is translating word problems into percents or fractions or decimals or ratios. And these can get very confusing. But what I want to do now is give you two hints that will really help you work through these problems. So let's say the problem wants to know what is 25% of 50. Now you might have learned in school is over of is percent over 100. And you can absolutely use that. Uh, the thing is that you can only use them for problems that are structured in this way. If they're not written in the is of way, it may not work too well for you. So for instance, this one's just going to be 25 over 50 is, or sorry, I did the percents wrong. Let me erase that. It's 25%. So it will be, uh, what is, oh, so x out of 50 is 25 over 100, right? And then this would just be 12, or x would be 12.5, once you do the cross multiplying and the dividing. Now the thing is with this, like I said before, is that sometimes it's not going to be written like this. So what I suggest is to follow this method. And that is to take this sentence and translate it into, into an equation by following it word by word. This is what I mean. Whenever you see what, that's your x. So here is your x. Whenever you see is, that's your equal sign, so your equal sign. Whenever you see the percent, you just can convert that to a decimal. You can leave it as a percent, but we're going to have to convert it to a decimal anyway to do the math, so I would convert it to a decimal. So 0.25 is the same thing as 25%. And then here's the key thing. This is the most important thing, that if you remember this, this will help you to translate word problems. It's of. Whenever you see the word of, it's going to translate into multiply. So that's going to be 0.25 times 50. And there you go. So let me pull up my calculator. So I just got to do 0.25 times 50. And I get 12.5. There you go. And there's your answer. Now, why I like this better is because it's much more flexible with any kind of fraction, percent, or decimal problem that you're going to see on the SAT. This is over of method is useful if it's written like this. And I guarantee you most of the time on the SAT, they're not going to write it like this because they know you've learned this. So they want to see if you're able to think about percents and fractions and decimals without it. So let me give you another example. Um, I have to kind of think one off the top of my head. Um, something like this. What? So no. John owns 17 jeans, uh, 17 shirts. What fraction of his entire wardrobe is this if he owns, I don't know, make it easy, 100 pieces. Now this doesn't automatically translate itself into a um, is over of situation, but again, let's figure out 
uh, this by translating it into words. So we can start here. What fraction, so x, of his entire wardrobe, so of his entire wardrobe, which is 100, right, 100 pieces, so of times 100 is this. So is equals, and then this, so that this is the 17, 17. And there you go. x is then just 17 over 100, and there's your fraction. Right? You probably could have gotten that without doing this translation, but you can see how it applies. All I'm doing is I'm just taking the sentence and translating it word for word and going from there. Let me pause the video for a second so I can find a really good example from the real SAT uh, that I can use for the next problem. Okay, so I went ahead and found one. Uh, that last example wasn't great. I think, hope you got the idea. It's better if I don't make them up off the spot because they're not going to turn out very good. So I went into the SAT book and I found a few examples uh, that we can use. The first one is on page 518 of the SAT official SAT study guide. It's basically this. Which of the following, so which is equivalent to one half, yeah, one half of 23% of 618. So they want to know, they have a bunch of choices, we won't A, B, C, D, we won't go through these. I just want to look at this part right here. So they want to know which one of these is equal to this. Well, let's just translate this. So we have one half of is multiply, 23%, that's just 0.23, of again is multiply, 618. You multiply this out, you're going to get a number, and you see which one of these in the choices equals that. Or you can see which one of the choices equals something approximating this, right? And there you go. So that is just translating this from words into numbers. It's pretty straightforward that way. Another example comes from page 655, number 12. And they say this. If A plus B is equal to 125% of 4B, we can of B, what is the value, what is A over B? So that's just what they want to know. Uh, and this is a grid answer, there are no choices. So again, translate it word for word. If A plus B is equal to, okay, so that's just A plus B, is equal to, so equals, 125%, so again, we have to translate this into a, into a decimal, so that's just going to be 1.25 of, so multiply, uh, 4B. What is the value of A over B? Okay, so... We've got what we need here, essentially, and we just kind of solve from here. Um, and actually, I forgot it's 2b, not a plus b. It's a plus 2b, according to the problem. So we just solve. So this will be a plus 2b equals, that's uh, 5b. a equals 3b. And let's say a over b would then be 3. And I believe that is your answer. Uh, yes, it is. And that's it, right? Uh, so you just translate from your words into an equation, you solve, and you're all set. And let's just work on one more. This is from page 796. If 30% of M is 40, what is 15%? of m. Okay, again, translate. So, let's do this one first. If 30%, so 0 0.30, of multiply m, m, is the same thing as equals 40. Okay, let's solve this. Divide both sides by 0.3. We get m is, I think it says, it says 133.3, repeating. What is 50% of m? So, it would just be 15. So, what is 0.15? of times m. So you would just do 0.15 times 133.3 and you get 20, I think. Let me just confirm that before I move on. 133.3 times 0.15 gets you, yeah, 20. Let's get around to 20, which is in this one choice b. Right, so again, you're just taking the words and you're translating them, and that's all you really do. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to do one more, just because this captures a lot of different uh, elements of this story. It captures the fractions and the percents and all that stuff, and I want to make sure we understand this. So let's look at number 13 of 834. So it says, a salesman's... Sorry, I have to write this all out, sorry. Actually, you know what? I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to type it out, so hold on one second. 
Okay, so I typed it out really quick. Let's work on this one. It's number 13, and it's on page 13. And it's on page 834 of the study guide. A salesman's monthly gross pay consists of 1200 plus 20% of the dollar amount of his sales. If his gross pay for one month was 2500 what was typo, the dollar amount of his sales for that month? All right. So what are they saying here? They're saying that his gross pay equals 1200 plus 20%, so that's 0 0.2, of the dollar amount of his sales. So times, we'll call S, his sales. So that's our equation, right? They tell us if his gross pay for one month was 2500 2500 what was the dollar amount of his sales? Well, we're just going to say it's equal to 1200 plus 0.2 times S. So subtract 1200 from both sides, we get 1300 equals 0.2 times S. And both, both sides by 0.2, we're going to get S is 6500, and that is your answer. Now, you can also think about it this way. So his gross pay is 1200, which is base, he gets that regardless of what he does, plus a commission based off of his salary, or excuse me, of his sales. So if he makes 2500 one month, 1200 of that he would get no matter what. So really, he made 1300 commission. So his commission equals 20% of his sales, right? 0.2 times his S. So that's how you're going to get 1300 is 20% of his sales. So if we translated this into words, we would get 1300 is equals 20% is 0.2 of his times, and his sales we're just going to call S. And then again, this is the exact same equation we've seen multiple times. You solve that, you get 6,500. And that's pretty much how you work with percent. So really, this is something you should, I spent a long time doing this video because I wanted to make sure you get percents, you get fractions, you get decimals because they're so important. Not only to get questions right, but also to understand what they're asking for and how to get it. Uh, because they're not going to be straightforward. As you can see from this problem, it's not an is over of situation. You have to know how to work with percents without having to use is over of or proportions or any of that kind of thing. So that's why this translation method I think is so useful.